episode 234 of the Whatnots Review Show, where every week we pick a story and we talk about it. This could be a movie, a TV series, anime, manga, comic book, audio drama, all kinds of entertainment. We watch it, read it, listen to it, and then we come back here and we talk about it. My name is Melissa Wilkinson, and I am joined on this fine December morning by Kyle Springer. Hello, hello. I, I, I feel like I, I have to say for first thing that wow. I have a Pizza Lord hat on. So, uh, some of you all might not know exactly what that means, but my my partner got this for me for my birthday. Oh. Custom embroidered pizza logo on the front, and then it says Pizza wow. Lord on the oh back. Oh my god! <laughs> it's great. Truly! <laughs> yeah. Wow, the king has his crown. It should, that's exactly <laughs> what I said to her, too. <laughs> I was like, I finally have a crown. (laughs) Good stuff. Melissa, how are you? I'm doing fine this weekend. I'm getting started on on Christmas things. I've got my tree up. I've made one batch of cookies. Today I'm going to make more. I'm trying new things. I'm trying new appliances. I've got one of those cookie guns where you like press out the little butter cookies in different shapes. A cookie gun? I've never heard yeah. of this thing. I, I'm not into the like baking cook wire stuff, so I'm not up on all the la, 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 latest. But uh, <laughs> these are <laughs> no, these amazing. are ancient, not ancient, but like your your grandparents probably made you cookies like this. You've seen those delicate little butter cookies where they're like pressed into shapes of like wreaths or trees or something or little I stars. Just figured that those were like cookie cutters. <laughs> No, you it's like Play-Doh. You squeeze the dough through like a huh. uh, like a little disc with like some yeah. lines in it and different designs. So you like could chunk you could chunk the dough out of that. And it's in like a little shape. Good old could chunker. That's that. That's what yeah. you need. <laughs> I've never could chunked a cookie before. This will be new. Good stuff. Good stuff. Uh, well, yeah, we are off to our holiday phase now, Harla holiday se- season. Now we went to uh, this store yesterday ca- called the North Pole, uh, and it was ah! just filled with all kinds of uh, the holiday decorations from all around the world and different kinds of lights and Christmas ch- 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 trees and all sorts of stuff. So it was fun to go look around. And here we are on the podcast starting our holiday season of yes. uh, of holiday themed material to cover <laughs> material uh, I was about to say pitches but it's not like we're we're, we're not covering a pitch right so it's the mm. ho- holiday material yeah here we go <laughs> last time i pitched you three holiday installments in larger franchises and you could have watched batman returns or you could have watched uh, the Star Wars Holiday Special, which I figured mm-hmm. you would go for as a joke. But you picked the Muppet Christmas Carol. Yeah, I did. Speaking of Star Wars Holiday Special, they they did have a uh, that North Pole store did have a Darth Vader like Christmas uh, statue thing here. And, you, you know, nothing warms most people's hearts than a space fascist on Christmas. So, so <laughs> nothing warms your heart more than a guy who got his arms and legs cut off on a volcano. <laughs> right. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Um, but 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 yeah, Muppets Christmas Carol. Yeah, I, I ended up picking this one because Kind of repeatedly, one of the jokes on this show is that you would make a reference to something Muppets or Muppet yeah. related. And I'd always be like, I have no idea what you're talking about, Melissa. <laughs> I I know of the Muppets, I, yeah. I, but I don't have that same kind of knowledge as you do or just like I haven't even watched them as much. I've seen things. I, I don't know. I, I, yeah. I, I know I've seen this movie before, but it was so long ago that I just don't remember anything. And since we we did uh, the first Muppet movie earlier on in the, mm. in the show here on the review show, uh, I was like, you know what? Let's let's do it twice in one year. Let's do yeah. another Muppets thing to just build on that base 
knowledge now. <laughs> so that's why I was like, Muppets, we have to return to the Muppets. Thank you. Thank you for allowing me this treat of showing yeah. you a very important part of my childhood. Absolutely. Absolutely. I, I feel like next year there won't be an, ex an excuse now when you say some Muppets thing. I'll be like, oh, yeah, the Muppets. I've seen those. And I, can, I, <laughs> I will feel like I will be in on the joke. <laughs> Good. Whatever Good. reference. So. Yeah, go. one of your goals this year was to build up knowledge on the kaiju genre. So we spent time yes. with big, big monsters. Now's your time to spend with little felt monsters, too. <laughs> monsters and creatures of all sizes. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, Melissa, what is your history with the Muppet Christmas Carol? I grew up with VHS tapes of the Muppet movie and the great Muppet caper, which I think is actually my favorite of anything Muppets. And uh, we'd watch them whenever they were on TV. I didn't own this one growing up. I think sometimes you'd catch it on TV or like you'd be shown it in school when you've got sure, like a yeah. half day at the end of the year or something. You have your little Christmas party where the PTA moms make you a cookie decorating kit. So it With was a chunker. <laughs> <laughs> you remember like the. the they bring in sugar cookies with frosting and sprinkles and like you have oh, a yeah. station. Everybody goes around and decorates it. And then you watch a movie with the lights off, which was the most exciting thing just to be in your regular classroom. But it was dark now. Yep. Dark mode. <laughs> <laughs> but it was a, a rarer treat, the Muppet Christmas Carol. And I think that makes the more magical and sometimes frightening parts of the movie more magical and frightening because it wasn't something I was as familiar with when I was a little kid. Like it would just happen to me. Like I could put in my VHS tapes of the first two movies whenever I wanted, but the universe kind of had to steer me towards, Oh, it's Christmas Carol time now. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Indeed. Yeah. So I, like I said, I, I had seen this before long, long ago. Um, didn't really remember much of it. So watching this again, it really felt like I was watching it for the first time. Um, and I, I had a great time. I had a blast. I, I think the Muppets really, really know how to tell the story they want to tell without overstaying their welcome, without yeah. overcomplicating the plots. Uh, and they just have fun, right? Like it's 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 a fun like. What's interesting to me is I'm sure as a kid, Michael Caine's performance as Scrooge maybe would have frightened me a little bit more. But no. I don't feel like like I felt like even in his Scroogiest moments, I never felt like he was that terrible or that mean. Mm -hmm. Um, And at, like I, I, I felt like he was a character that you could see like. I bet you there is some nice somewhere in it. He's yeah. just he's just having a bad day. Right. <laughs> uh, but it, I mean, it, his performance was incredible. It was fantastic. I, I just it, 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 it was a good hour and a half. And it was yeah. done, done, done. I was just like, man, this was perfect. It's exactly what it needed to be. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm happy you enjoyed it. I was watching this and my roommate came home and she's mm -hmm. like, oh, I don't really know Muppets. Like I guess she was in the same boat you were in. So she yeah. sat down and she watched some of it with me. And for the scenes where it's the, the Cratchit family played by Kermit and Piggy and a bunch of little frogs and pigs where they all sit down and they have their Christmas dinner. She's like, oh, shit, this is wholesome. And I'm like, yeah, this isn't a parody of A Christmas Carol. This is a very sincere, authentic telling of A Christmas Carol, just with Muppets in it. Yeah, yeah. I mean, in, in a sense, it is also kind of a parody, but not in the sense that they're like making fun of no. it. They are they are doing the, the story for rail, but then they have their own kind of twists on it and yeah. stuff that it is, is just like, Oh, that's neat. Or that's really funny. Um, mm -hmm. cause yeah, I, cause, uh, you know, the, 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 the first two ghosts that show up and warn him that, Hey, the ghosts of Christmas 
past, present, and future. Like you will experience all that. You would almost expect them to be this this Scrooge because they, they are those two like uppity old men. Uh, <laughs> yes, puppets. Uh, I I don't remember their Statler names. Statler and Waldorf. Statler and Waldorf. Yeah, they like that's what you, you would expect. And so the fact that they have a real person playing Scrooge is an interesting thing. And then their narrator, like they have this like meta layer where he is a character yeah. in the world in the world and is narrating it but he's also claiming to be uh, uh, the, 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 the charles D D yeah. dickens right yeah yeah uh, gonzo plays charles dickens and we didn't get any rizzo when we watched the muppet movie that was pre rizzo I'm very happy you got to meet rizzo this is where yeah. he shines rizzo the rat great addition um but like he is sincerely like he's it's not like he's trying to be an actor that's playing Charles Dickens. He's like, no, mm. I am Charles. D D yeah. D Dickens. It's me. I wrote this this book here. Um, so I, I think that adds a fun and interesting layer to it, too. I, I guess I don't know if the original book had a narrator or not. Um, I mean, but it's a. <laughs> A I think it was told in omniscient third person, which isn't okay. like a narrator as a character, but kind of. Sure. Yeah, 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 yeah. And I um, was reading that they're like, we want to take some of the the prose, some of the language outside of the dialogue from Charles Dickens' original story. So let's put a narrator type character in here. And I don't yeah, think works. I've seen a lot of other Christmas Carol adaptations that do that. It was really interesting. I, I will mention this again at the end of the show, but it reminded me. Have you seen the show Central Park on Apple no, TV? It what's is that? the second cartoon from the creators of Bob's Burgers. So oh. it's that same art style. And it's about a family who lives uh, in Central Park. And the father's job is like the park manager, like taking care of all of that stuff there. Uh, but they do the same thing where they have a narrator of the show uh, that is also a character in the show. And mm. so he is he's it at times it feels like he's omniscient and just like knows everything that's happening but he's also there like cr creeping in the characters windows and stuff <laughs> like that being like i hope they don't see me right um, wow and, and so it, it, it's just an, an interesting thing to include that i really enjoyed in this movie which is interesting because i actually don't like it in central park but oh. it works really well for this movie so mm -hmm. there you go good stuff i i had a blast yeah, I'm happy we did watch this one in addition to the Muppet movie, which is them telling a wholly original story where they are themselves. But another large part of Muppets is the the Muppets as actors themselves, as players mm -hmm. in a theater company, and they take on different roles. Even though this isn't literally a show that the Muppets are putting on, you can kind of look at any of these adaptations like this. Like there's this one, there's Muppet Treasure Island. Yeah. There was like a TV movie that's like Muppets Wizard of Oz. They Which, they do this a lot too. And it it suits them well. It it fits in with continuity too, because that's what mm -hmm. they do in the original Mayovi yeah. is they go to Hollywood for Kermit to be a star and they bust in there with everyone right and they're all just like make us movie stars and so here's all the movies that they made and it's just like oh yeah. this is nice mm -hmm. they made it they this did it's wholesome <laughs> <laughs> exactly i couldn't have said it better myself <laughs> Good stuff. Uh, well, let's take a quick break for some housekeeping. And then when we get back, we will da 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 dive into the movie a little bit more. Uh, and I, I guess dive into spoilers with this. Right. It's, are, it's, it's so funny to call it spoilers, spoilers for one, yeah. <laughs> yeah, any Christmas Carol adaptation. None of them veer off course. They're all the same. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. We'll be right back. We put a lot of hard work into the shows that we make. And yes, we make multiple different shows here at The Whatnots, and we'd love it if you check them all out. You can find out more information on our website at thewhatnots.com, as well as your favorite podcasting platform of choice. 
when you type in the whatnots, all of our shows will pop up right there. Just don't forget to give us a nice rating and review if you like the shows. If you want to support what we do here at The Whatnots, patreon.com slash The Whatnots is the best place to do that. You can support us for as little as a dollar a month. You can get all kinds of exclusive content at the $3 tier. You can also get a shout out and a thank you on all of our shows at the $5 tier. You can support us on Twitch by subscribing to our channel at twitch.tv slash the whatnots. And we would love to have you all join us for our live streams and talk with us in the chat. And lastly, we have merch. If you'd like to grab yourself a shirt or a sweatshirt or a mug or something else, go to the whatnots.com slash store to pick up some merch today. We are back. A big shout out to all of our Patreon supporters. Thank you all so much Thank for checking you. us out, for supporting us. It means a lot. We appreciate it. Uh, in the month of December, uh, shortly after this goes up here, uh, we will be recording a Patreon exclusive podcast, The Pilots Club, on Smash. Uh, this is a TV show about the production of a stage play musical. Uh, it's all a fake one, but uh, mm. Melissa, you have described this in the same like kind of space as like Riverdale that like people loved to hate on it. And like it, it was hot garbage, like that kind of fascination. I, I believe there. that was the cultural response to Smash. Yes. In interesting. So, yeah, we'll, we'll be watching the pilot of Smash and discussing that for the three dollar patrons and above. Uh, cool things that we've been up to here on the whatnots uh, here on the re on the review show. We just finished up our coverage of Kaiju Max. This is a comic book written and drawn by Xander Cannon, uh, and it's all about a bunch of giant monsters in prison, uh, in prison, outside of prison, the whole economy and how all of that yeah. works there. It was a lot of fun. We covered that for the past couple months as our end of the month special. Um, of course, there there is no end of the month special here in December because we like to take the final two weeks off. I just heard a big mm. loud bang outside my window. That was wild um but uh yes it, it's gone so take it yeah, <laughs> yeah he's <laughs> climbing around sure, up there he sure is um but we we take the end of the year off for some holiday break uh and here we are doing our holiday pitches right now so i'll do mine next week and that'll be it for the review show except yeah. for our uh like end of the year celebration anniversary mm -hmm. retrospective uh, so keep your eyes out for that. On the on the captain's log, we have a very fun g g g g game that we play at the start of December every year called the Rotten Tomatoes Movie Predictions Game. I I I don't know it, if you have doesn't. an actual official <laughs> right. title. Yeah, every no snappy title. No, every year we're just like tomato game. Tomato first game. week of December, tomato game. <laughs> We like to predict the Rotten Tomato movie scores of the upcoming year's movies. Uh, and then at the end of either uh, on this same one, we also look back to see how cl close were our predictions uh, and st stuff like that for the year prior. So that's a lot of good fun. Uh, of course, on the reactor core, we have some new trailer reactions to Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3. We also have a reaction to the Guardians of the Gig Galaxy Holiday Special. And last but not least, we have a reaction to the movie trailer for Cocaine Bear. So, yeah, go check that one out. <laughs> <laughs> Good stuff. Uh, but that's about it for housekeeping right now. So let's dive into The Muppets Christmas Carol. Bam. Spoiler alert. All right. Melissa, where should we start with this one? Uh, how do you feel like this movie elevated the small knowledge of Muppets you already have? Were there new characters you'd like to see? Did you gain a different appreciation for characters you did see in the original movie? I, I, I feel like Rizzo the Rat was kind of the only new one. 
um, mm-hmm. at, at least the new, new one that I noticed. Um, he, he was the only one that was new. I, I liked the inclusion of Gonzo as kind of a, a more normal character in this. Because yeah. I feel like in the first one, he is that weird oddball. Of just like, what is he doing? Like, why is he even here? Um, but they they still do make allusion to that. There is a scene. I think they go inside a bar or something. They go somewhere and a chicken mm. w- walks by and he just absolutely is like looking <laughs> at that. At this ch- 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 <laughs> this ch- Heck and like like he's he's about to go spit some g- game or something uh but <laughs> it's it's like that is the only like tip of the hat towards that besides that he's just he's he's pretty just yeah. normal which i kind of liked yeah he's got different facets there is a joke where rizzo like falls down a chimney he gets all this ash and soot on him and then he falls mm-hmm. on like a hot like roast duck that's being roasted on a spit over the fire yeah. and he like screams and runs and he tells us to Gonzo and he's like I, I fell down a chimney and landed on some hot meat or whatever yeah. Gonzo just says oh, you have all the fun <laughs> right, like I, yeah. I, Gonzo is it's like way on the back burner for him but he's still like a thrill seeker he still wants entirely unique experience right he's not like floating away on some balloons or yeah. like he did last time he's not getting blasted off like team rocket he's like <laughs> yeah. he's just he's normal he's the 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 normal like he he is the like every man in the, the this <laughs> one which is weird in a weird way i mean yeah. i guess kermit is too but mm. uh still it, it's just like he's the one that like has the like weird like you just you can go through the bars when he sees the guy after he just like popped out. Like he's the one con- con- confused and like, what? You did something weird here, right? And uh, yeah, it's 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 interesting to just see see him be like, he's just a normal guy, just a normal yeah. dude. <laughs> yeah, it is nice to have him as this more kind of calming, authoritative figure of the narrator, and to have a story that lets another Muppet take the lead. Like Kermit gets to play the Bob Cratchit role, which in this movie has more to do than any other Bob Cratchit has to do. But it's still yeah. like a smaller supporting role. And like Piggy, this is like the least Piggy any movie has ever had. But it it works like for the characters who have smaller appearances, they really make those appearances count. And for the, the characters who get to rise and, and take the main stage, it's a really nice change of pace. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Kermit is still kind of he's not the main character, but he's still the main character in a sense that like, yeah, it, it, it it's still more so fo- following Scrooge, obviously. But it, he like Bob Cratchit is the like central family that that Scrooge has to like make a change for it's like I'll give you a Mm. raise and I'll give you the day off and you can come eat with me instead and all of that stuff so he is still like the main man um, Mm -hmm. which feels right but you mentioning Miss Piggy I think is an interesting one to me too because I, I guess the way that I view Miss Piggy in the Muppets is that she she never truly has what she wants, which is Kermit, mm. right? She, yeah. she she's always pining after him, always like just throwing herself at at yeah. him, flirting with him. This is the one where she has everything she, she yeah. wants w- with him. Like she has a family, a bunch of little kids. Like she's she's perfectly happy in 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 this and as a result has this like backseat role like it is just barely featured in the st- in the story cuz she's she's fine she's happy yeah she's she's <laughs> made it <laughs> yeah, except for that they uh they, they're a very poor family and yeah. one of her children's very sick and her, her husband's boss is mean to him yeah yeah she she is more content in some regards than other piggies are yeah, And Kermit, as the sort of leader of the Muppet troupe, is like approximately kind of a father figure. 
But to see him literally in a father role, and Piggy's never gotten to be maternal in, in any fashion. To see them playing literal parents with all these little kids mm-hmm. is really unique to this movie. I don't know if that's a storyline we get in anything else. I don't. They get married at the end of Muppets Take Manhattan, but then we don't see what happens next. We don't see them like with a home and children. Is yeah, that, I, I guess that's what I was about to ask next. Is there any other Muppet? movie or tv show where they do have kids i i don't think so maybe in like fantasy sequences or something i'm not a muppet expert what i know i know very well but there is uh, like some newer stuff that aired on like abc in the last like 15 years that i don't know well i I don't think i've seen because that was also just a weird question that popped into my mind it is like because they 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 have multiple kids i don't think i saw a pig that was a boy so they only do the pigs as the girls <laughs> and the I... frogs as the boys that's <laughs> like I, I feel like there would be some like why can't we get like a guy pig and the, it's like the son mm. of <laughs> hermit there That'd i be in- interesting well tiny tim is kermit's nephew robin who i think you do see briefly in the muppet movie in that framing device where they're in the movie theater watching the movie so like that's a reused model yeah the other muppets might also be reused models like maybe they had like a young miss piggy in some old sketches they've still got that design around so they've got little girl pigs or they've got like you know another like friend or relative of kermit's they've got another Mm. like you know little boy frog because a lot of them are different reused models for things like, you know, probably not the same physical Muppet. I don't know how long one of these lasts. I don't know, like over the course of the film, like uh, if, you, if you spend all this time working with Kermit, is that Kermit still good for another movie? Like, I don't know how many they make. I don't know the longevity of any particular working like production right. Muppet. But I, I do wonder if some of them are like reused designs or like, oh, we already we've made Probably. that before. We know how to construct it. We know how to operate it. Yeah. Yeah. There, there's p- p- probably some multiple different designs for different things. You probably don't need as many details on one. If this one's going to be in the background of a shot and it's a little blurry, right? Or if it's yeah. like it can be smaller to make it seem like it's farther away. So if you bring it in the foreground, yeah, it does look like a, ki- a, ki- a kid ver- ver- version of Kermit. Um, but yeah, that like that stuff was interesting. Besides Rizzo, though, I, I don't think I really no- noticed any new characters. I'm sure there was, uh, the, though. Like the little bunny boy. Uh, who like goes to get the turkey twice as big as him? Like that is a character. His name is Bean Bunny. That's not just like an animal. He's got some appearances. Like he was a character Jim Henson was trying to to add to the cast. Like right before he died, and so I think this was the first Muppet thing produced after he died. So they wanted to put Bean Bunny in there. I gotcha. So now that I think about it a little bit more, there were some Muppets in here that I I think were new, or at least were new to me and were fascinating Mm. to me. And these were all the ones that were like the more human looking ones, but that were also like older. They looked more like they belonged in some like Halloween, like witchy movie. (laughs) They were more monstrous, right? You you know what I mean? But they were still humanoid. Uh, like the, the, those ones like i i don't know them from anything and i i don't think i've seen them in anything like that but they were kind of cool i was kind of fascinated by those ones um but that that those those were kind of the only ones there and they don't have much of an actual part right they're 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 just mm. there they say a mm. couple of lines and that's it yeah, yeah, there is a know. good variety of really interesting background Muppets, both living and sort of animated, inanimate things. I love any time they animate a fruit or vegetable. I love <laughs> fruit and vegetable Muppets when like a head of lettuce has like little eyes and talks to you. Fantastic. One of my favorite things. 
boy wait till you find out about veggie tales <laughs> <laughs> no but they have to be like a physical muppet i take muppet <laughs> only i love when they just have like a, a wrinkly green pepper <laughs> good stuff yeah let's um, oh go for let's it. talk about the designs of the actual three ghosts because this sure. is some of their finest work like the ghost of christmas past is a special muppet that they designed to work underwater that's how she looks so like wispy and ethereal she's got like all these layers of like gauze sort of floating around her they filmed her underwater and then like green screened her in there so yeah. like i don't even know what michael kane was looking at like it's a real feat of technical artistry and of performance <laughs> And I know we live in an era where a lot of people are like acting to tennis balls, but you imagine th th that was less common when this movie was made in the early 90s. Like that was still a skill that an actor r really had to try and come up with on set, like how to act mm. to maybe nothing. I don't know. Interesting. Yeah. Um, I that Muppet creeped me out. Let's put it that way. <laughs> I, <laughs> that one is, is weird. It's creepy because it's not it's it doesn't look like a typical Muppet, especially it's. Yeah, face. yes, it's not. Yes, it's not even a humanoid Muppet like they do the face so differently that by time you see, see it on screen, it has this like weird plastic or porcelain doll almost yeah. look to it. And dolls and horror and creepy dead things and creepy children it just it just, it's scary it's just like what is this this isn't allowed in a muppets movie this is not right. wholesome. don't do this <laughs> <laughs> she does look more humanoid than other muppets but muppety enough that you can tell that's not like a person's face the, the, yeah and it's there's not almost this weird like uncanny valley aspect yes. to it yeah, yeah. and she's Voice it sounds like a real child. Like that's not an adult doing like a child voice. And that's another thing that just sticks out because it's not really happening anywhere else. Like the little like frog and pig children are voiced by adults. This is the one right. child voiced by a child. So she's so unique in so many ways. Uh, I can get that she's kind of creepy. And that's something I love about this movie that it does uh, appropriate like for its audience lean into the horror that's part of a Christmas Carol. Like the parts at the beginning of the movie where Scrooge comes home and like he hallucinates like his door knocker, like coming alive at him. And he's just in that mm -hmm. cold, dark, empty house by himself. And he starts hearing the rattling of the chains. That is eerie stuff. This movie's very yeah. good at that. Definitely. What? <laughs> I, I was also fascinated by those chains on them. And again, I forget their <laughs> names. Statler, Statler and Waldorf. And Waldorf. Uh, that was an interesting thing to me, that they were ghosts in chains. So what level of hell do they need to be in to be chained up and put in prison in hell <laughs> again? <laughs> right. It's not enough that they're just they're ghosts. Right. They're, they're in ghost prison. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if they're necessarily like in if they are physically in prison, like they go to a cell or something, but that is I from the original. I, I so. They they explain Dickens. the like yeah. metaphorical meaning of the chains. It was our greed that yeah. like locked us down to mm -hmm. right. Um but yeah, I, I just thought that was an, an interesting thing. But that's immediately what my mind w went to. I was like, man, what did they do that they got put in jail? in hell <laughs> mm -hmm. so funny but yeah uh back to the spirits of C christmas yeah and the the middle one the the ghost of christmas present i love that he is huge when he first appears yeah. he's massive he's the size of the entire room and then he shrinks down and he's still huge he's one of those big like suit muppets like sweetums yeah. I love those things. I love the scale of them. I love like the physical motion of the thing. His kind of like walk. Great. Great. Yeah. 
Yeah, he 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 de- 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 definitely has a walk to to him, and I I think I I think to kind of match the like ethereal waviness of the mm. one before it, they just g- gave him this big long beard that sh- shakes as he speaks, and his robe is flowing, but he has this like bounce and bop to 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 him as he walks, and it's it's a great like physical performance because you Im- immediately your eyes go to to him he is moving constantly he's big he's ginormous uh and he seems the one he's, he 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 seems to be the one that is more santa like it like he is yes. jolly he is jovial like he's not this like weird creepy spirit that's like doing some weird creepy thing over there it's like what are you doing this is a kids movie don't do that that's weird uh he 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 also seems more normal if that makes sense and who knows what normal actually means but he he is the one that i could see like he like if they had said he was just a town's person i would have been like yep cool yeah yeah, yeah, he, he would that buy this. Yeah, that's just another one of the many Muppet Tunes people. Yeah, I like exactly. that at, as the ghost of Christmas present, he ages as the day goes on. So you've got several different versions of him as like more like gray comes into his beard and his face changes a little bit and his hair is that wonderful like sort of wispy feathery texture that you get on some Muppets. Yeah. I love to see that. I love to see so much of it. Just this whole guy's whole head of hair and his beard are all that like fluffy, feathery boa stuff. Yeah, it was good. They can make such good designs on all of yeah. this stuff. So <sighs> Everything's fun. so perfect to what it needs to be. And then you get to that ghost of Christmas yet to come. <clears throat> it's creepy. Yeah, it's got the sort of like Grim Reaper sort of look that a lot of ghost of christmas futures have but like the fact that it's just this plain like black circle where its face would be Mm -hmm. like there's just nothing there it's so tall it's got such a weird physical shape it's got its arms folded into its body and then it stretches its hand out and his arm is so long like way longer than you thought it was yeah man yeah i that that is the the one that I feel like I paid attention to the least because mm-hmm. of how Grim Reaper like it is. Mm-hmm. Uh, it was just like, oh yeah, that's the Grim Reaper, even though it's right. not right. Um, but yeah, even that one is scary. Just not having a face or or just be, being so like in shadow that that, that you can't see its face. Um, it is it, just it, it's a scary thought thought that is this unknown well i i guess it fits right because it is an unknown it's a christmas future right so th- it it could be anyone it c- could be something someone you haven't met yet and so that's why it hasn't yeah. really, really been Ooh. revealed yet um like yeah. I'm, I'm i'm wondering if these ghosts especially in this muppet one if they represent uh, like people that he has interacted with in some way, maybe not it in, in in the like it, like you're the mm-hmm. ghost of Christmas past, and there was this one Christmas where I could have saved you, but I didn't. Now you're dead, mm. so that's that's <laughs> you, right? No, it, like not necessarily like that, but m- maybe it was like his schoolboy crush that uh, mm. like he lost contact with or mm. something mm. or yeah some like representation of his father figure for ghosts of yeah. christmas present uh and then yeah someone he doesn't know yet or hasn't Ooh. met yet or is just unsure how th- th- their relationship will go forward into some kind of christmasy thing i don't know mm-hmm. <laughs> I don't Interesting. know the original Dickens versions of these spirits because I've seen, I think the, the third one, most of the time you see it, like even when we saw Scrooged, it's still like right. a take on that, even if it's more ghastly and gruesome and his head's like a TV or something <laughs> like that's almost always the third one. But the first two, 
I've seen a lot of different interpretations of the first two, and I don't know what like the Dickensian canonical truth is. I don't know if these are the closest ones we've ever seen. Probably. Interesting. I don't think yeah. Charles Dickens wrote like a, a sassy cab driver <laughs> as the ghost of Christmas past, like in Scrooge. I think that's a Richard <laughs> Donner original. <laughs> Good stuff. Um, yeah, yeah. Those those ghosts were were interesting. I h- how do you feel about the kind of I- the, the interaction between Scrooge and the other Muppets? There, like, what what I, what? how do you feel about like his relationship to the, them? I really applaud this movie for how sincere it is and i was reading that michael Caine really wanted to do this movie like he'd had friends and colleagues who had worked with the muppets before and they said they had so much fun on set you know it really sort of opened them up to like a younger audience like it played great with like their kids or you know if they if they met kids on the street they'd be like well i know you from the muppets and they're like oh it's cool to be known from the muppets so michael Caine's like i want to do this like get me into this And he's like, I'm going to play this dead series. I'm going to play this like I am in the Royal Shakespeare Company. I'm not going to wink. He's like, I'm not going to do anything Muppety. But that's not to say that he is above being Muppety. He's like, I just think this is what I want to do and what this particular project needs. He's like, I am going to give it my all. I am going to give the performance that I would give to the queen. (laughs) Right. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, his performance was fantastic. I liked it a lot. But yeah, that is the thing is like it, it, it is played very seriously. He is not making jokes, right? I mean, you wouldn't really expect Scrooge to make many jokes anyways. Yeah. But there there is a way that they can write that character where he could make some some jokes or some some snide comments or stuff like that on the side. Um, but he he plays it very sh- straight and sincere. And the I, I think what's important here is the emotions that he yeah. f- feels with these things like that is what he needs to play and bring mm-hmm. out. And I think that is really what he did here. Like at at the start of our show, I mentioned that I never really felt like he was so mean that mm. he was completely unlikable. He, even when they're doing that introduction song where they're yeah. like, here comes Mr. What a song. Meaty or whatever his name is. Right. Uh, th- th- like they are just railing on him. Like here comes Mr. Evil. Here comes Mr. Mean Face, Mr. Mean Poopy Pants, Butt Face. Right. And and he's just like he he doesn't hear it. He just goes about his business. But even when he's dealing with Kermit playing Bob Cratchit. And he is mean and he is kind of putting a stop to all of these things that they're asking for. He's not so evil. Like he's Mm -hmm. just a harsh, Mm -hmm. strict man who very obviously is like, no, I am a capitalist. Like I I am a business man. Like Mm. let's do business. Um, Yeah. Like he's not insulting to any of his staff members. Really? He just gives them the absolute bare minimum like emotionally and in terms of physical resources. He's like, yeah. we only have money for one thing of coal. You guys can shiver. You'll be fine. You'll be uncomfortable, but you'll live. Like we're yeah. going to save money on this. And then I don't, I don't remember the other guy's name, the other like live action guy that comes in. Oh, and his talks nephew with Fred. Him. Yeah. Uh, they have a conversation. And I think as he's leaving, Scrooge has this like genuine, like this, this, this really, really sincere moment of la 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 laughter, and it's at someone else's expense. But he is in, mm. in that moment experiencing joy, like, and you can <laughs> see it in him that he is he he has some jo- joy in him and and understands what that is. And I think there are v- v- versions of this character out there that just make him so jo- joyless, right? And mm-hmm. so like. I don't understand emotion and I don't understand human interaction. Um, mm-hmm. 
which is, I, I think, what is so incredible about Michael Caine's performance yeah. in this is that this is a character that understands all of that stuff. Mm -hmm. And you can pretty easily tell even when he's being mean that like he knows how to be nice. He knows how to laugh and have a good time. And as he's taken through his past, present and future, like he like he has moments of wonder where he's like, yes, this is my schoolhouse. That's my best yeah. friend. Like he's just like, this is awesome. Like, this is so cool. Yeah. Um, and yeah, like, again, I think there are versions of that character where he sees this, he recognizes it and is just like, why are you showing me this? This mm. makes no sense. I don't want to be here. I have business to go do like this, just and but he's sitting there like, wow, this is cool. <laughs> I, I yeah. don't know what I'm watching, but it's neat. <laughs> yeah, like he does have fondness for things in his past, like he's. Delighted to see like his childhood school friends again. And even just like the room where he learned, like yeah. he says with great pride, like not in sort of an arrogant way, but kind of a very sincerely grateful way. I chose my profession in this room. Like this is a place yeah. where I learned where I turned into the person I am today. And even if he is kind of a sad, hollow shell of a man, he does have certain like respect and gratitude and reverence for things like that in his past. And like, he sees uh, Mr. Fozziewig and he's like, that man was as brutal as a rose petal. But he says it not insultingly, but very affectionately. Yeah. Like the the emotional journey of Scrooge, I think, is very well maintained in this movie. Like during that opening number, where all the townspeople are like, here comes Mr. Skin Flint. Here comes Mr. Cruel. There's like one chorus of carolers who's like, we think there's something inside him. We just have to figure out how to get to it. Like people, like people keep trying to interact with Scrooge over and over again. Like you think yeah. of the whole town is singing about how bad this guy is. Nobody would talk to him, but they still try to appeal to him over and over again. They're like, eventually something must work. And you yeah, had to see the parts where he does open up, where he does have sincere, like affection for things. And once he just, sees once he doesn't have to be himself anymore once he doesn't have to continue to be hard old rich mr scrooge who's like in control of everything doesn't let a penny slip by him doesn't give anybody any slack once he can just look at the cratchit family through the window and he's like oh i didn't know this little boy was sick he's very sick is he going to be okay like he has some humanity in him. And now that he's in this incredible circumstance, it can really shine through. And mm -hmm. the part at the end, the, the classic scene of throw open the window, you boy, what day is it? Like, that's always a scene of the boy is an instrument of doing something nice for the Cratchits. It's like, go get the turkey as big as you. And I'll like throw you a shilling or whatever. But yeah. Scrooge's interaction <laughs> with little bean bunny is so positive it's something i never really thought of before this viewing where he's like very happy about the particular kid who's there he doesn't know this kid but he's like you there boy what day is it december the 25th oh how smart you are that's a pip Do you know the store i'm talking about with the turkey in the window yes yes what a good job like he's so complimentary and encouraging he's like rooting for this one little bunny in the snow <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> like it's more than just please run an errand for me so I can do something nice for somebody else and I will, you know, compensate you for the errand. He's this is the nicest any Scrooge has ever been to that character. Yeah, which it, to me almost reads as. Past Scrooge saw the sense of community that his his town has. He, he knows mm. this stuff. He's internalized it. He's just chosen not to interact or to like wall it off and all that stuff. He might not 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 even know most of those people's names or anything because he chose not to interact. But he he's seen it enough that I think in this m moment where he opens the window and it's like, go get the turkey. Yeah. He knows exactly how everyone else in the community acts. Of, of, I'm just like, mm. hey. Hey, can can you help me out? Like you're you're like it it 
feels like that's how the other community members would have acted in that same spot, if that makes mm-hmm. sense. Um, yeah. Which is neat. I like that a lot that he's not. Yeah, he's, he's not j- 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 just like, all right, I'll give it a try. You, boy, do run me an errand, <laughs> right? Uh, but he, 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 like, he's still in this state of bewilderment, but knows that he can lean on uh, 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 other people to help yeah. him and do yes. stuff like that. And that's what a community is, right? Uh, yeah, he's more grateful for the help the little boy provides in this version than in other Christmas Carol adaptations. I think this one does such a good job of Scrooge not just paying back the specific people in his life that he's wronged, like like the Cratchits, like like his nephew, uh, like this specific bunts and honeydew and beaker coming to like collect money for the poor but like he's in that song he's like every boy and girl will be nephew and niece to me like he's like i am here for the entire community i am here for humanity not just the couple people in my life who i specifically owe things to he's like i am paying a debt to everyone now yeah yeah absolutely um like it it's it's like he recognizes it's not serendipitous for hi- him and how it can be- be- mm-hmm. benefit him, but it's how it, it's serendipitous for the community. Like, hey, yes. this guy happens to be here. If he does this thing for me, that means I can help out here and do that. Like, yeah, he's starting to see this bigger p- p- picture instead of yeah. helping this little guy help me. Mm-hmm. So it's it's sweet. Yeah. Yeah. I I want to mention that this was uh, director Brian Henson, uh, mm-hmm. uh, Jim Henson's son. This was yeah. his first thing he ever directed. It was his first feature okay. film. Maybe he worked on like TV specials or something like that before. And I was reading on IMDb trivia that Michael Caine, like as enthusiastic he was to join this project, he didn't know until halfway through filming this was Brian Henson's first directorial oh, wow. film. And he's like, yeah. I am impressed. And I think that is one of the quieter strengths of this movie beyond like the songs, the the technical performance of the Muppets, the way they work with the story, Michael Caine's performance. It is well directed. Like this movie is so yeah. good at tone and atmosphere and mood in, in ways that are like harder for you to put your finger on. It's really well executed. It's beautiful. And for a movie that's very obviously sound stagey, like there's parts where you look back and it's like, that's a oh, yeah. matte painting. That's not a real sky at all. You absolutely buy into it. it. It seems perfect for what this is, for feeling like you were looking at something pulled right off of the stage. Like you were looking at, like you're peeking into a Christmas decoration. Like you've got those like little toy villages that you put on the piece of white felt you know, over the the top of the, the, the dressers, you know, so it'll look like it's a little city and like little snow and you can peek through and there's like a little light in the little window. It's like yeah. you have opened up a door to one of those. Like this movie feels like it's kind of in a dollhouse almost in. And that's or what it's like supposed to feel like. Like that's globe. so perfect for this. Right. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. It's such like, a tiny I- contained little fantasy world. I really enjoyed the sets because of the mixture of of stuff that they have in there from mm-hmm. paintings to buildings they've actually built. But the sizes are yeah. wrong and the perspective yeah. is interesting. Like it makes this very fantasy fairy tale kind of look and feel because, um, yeah, there, there's times where human characters will like walk behind a building but the building is meant to look like it's no 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 size <laughs> like in the shot but when the hu- human goes next to it it's like oh that's like the same size as them. yeah and uh oh. yeah it's just it's it's really neat to see all all those because they they also don't draw attention to that like i i feel like it, even just in my small knowledge of the muppets that would end up being a joke somehow mm, like that like yeah. I, I feel i feel like at some point they would call attention to it who who knows if they would or if that's something they've done in the past but that's that's what it feels like but here they don't 
And I think that's what adds to the magic of this is just how this world exists. Yeah. Um, and it, yeah, it, it just it makes it that much more believable, despite how mm-hmm. fantastic it is. Mm-hmm. So, this- I en- enjoyed it a lot. Good sets, good puppets, good yeah. everything. Truly delightful yeah. music. I like mm-hmm. the songs in this a lot. I love in the opening number where they're talking about how cruel Scrooge is. They're like, he, he's, he, he works in real estate. He sells people cold and drafty houses. And then the tiny little mice come out the hole it's in the wall. It's even worse for think, mouses. It's, it's even worse <laughs> for mouses. And they're talking yeah. about how, like, people in the city are starving. And one of them says, no cheeses for us, Mises. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's so good. So good. Yeah. Um man i yeah that that is the the thing of just like i it's in certain ways it feels harder to talk about this movie because i enjoyed it so much because it's Mm. hard to see stuff that's like i don't know if i would have made that creative decision or i don't know it it, like if if the tone was right for the movie but yeah like Mm. they they really, really nailed this. And I think that's what I was also kind of alluding to at the start when I was like, it doesn't overstay its welcome. It tells yeah. you exactly what it needs to, to, right? It's directed really, really well. Uh, it's just, it's it's a really, really tight knit film. Yes. It's just like, damn, this is good. Right, yeah. I'm I'm happy we have this opportunity to talk about this like Christmas classic that's just always on. It's always around. Like you put it on the party. You put it on while you're doing something else. Like yeah. you almost take it for granted and just sit down and watch it and then sit here and talk about it for about the length of the actual movie itself. Sure. Uh, what a triumph this is. <laughs> They're tr- truly a flawless piece of film. Because it's 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 interesting to also then look back at the original Muppets and as as much fun as that one is, I feel like you can maybe poke a few holes in that one and be, 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 be like, well, some of the places it goes in its adventure just kind of feel extra or it just like mm. it's one more stop along the way. Did you need all of these these stops here to make this thing? And, and this doesn't have that at Mm. all and uh, i don't know if that is just because like that was the original muppet movie and they were just getting their Mm. feet underneath them or if it was because this is now being created by someone who grew up with this and like was around it their entire life and it's just yes like that that absolutely is even for me i'm a big comic book nerd Mm. And all of the like original comics that started to make it big uh, and like when when Batman was first created or mm. when Spider-Man was first created and then Fantastic Four and all of that, that stuff. Stan, Jack, all of those creators, like they had their v- v- versions of what those characters uh, mm. who who they were, what they would go on to become. But then when the people that read them as kids grew up and then started creating them they had this completely like different version of of not completely different but they had a a whole new perspective because this Mm. is like everything they knew since they were kids like their their whole life was consumed Mm. by batman fights the 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 joker or the riddler or this thing and so they they had all new insights of like what it meant to make this um and that that might be what we're seeing here with this one right of of just like he's been around this his whole life yes here he is making his first one so i for this to be the first thing after jim henson died not just the 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 creator of all of this the leader of all of this but literally the father of the director right. his son stepping yeah. into these footsteps incredible like this is so successful he would have been so proud i, I can't imagine any improvements mm. to this thing yeah absolutely um but yeah i don't know if i have too much yeah. more to say um 
on this one, but it was a lot of fun. I enjoyed it a lot. Mm -hmm. Good. I'm glad. Absolutely. Uh, let me open up our bingo sheet just in case there is anything. I don't think there was an update. Yeah. But, uh, my computer is trying to be as slow as it can be today. Oof. Just opened the program and it's still loading. Oh, come on, computer. <laughs> I know I don't have anything on my bingo sheet. I, I think mine was like meeting yourself thanks to time travel. And well, no, I He's... did have that one. I already have that one marked. So, the, all right. So, yeah, my last two was the reaction of an a animal to ju to judge trust worthiness and no time to eat breakfast. Yours was expository art and paper bag of tall groceries. Mm hmm. Which we don't have any of those. So no update nope. for bingo. So yeah. Melissa, let's get to recommendations. If people enjoy this, what else might they recommend? Or what else might they like? What, what else might uh, you <laughs> recommend? <laughs> Anything else in the larger Muppet family of products. I've mentioned that I think my favorite thing is the Great Muppet Caper, which I think mm -hmm. you would like. It's a heist movie. It's, it's, it's one that really I have fun. not seen I, the one that I always remember was Treasure Island like that was the one I know that yeah. we had the VHS of yes. that one I remember it um but yeah I, yeah. I have I've not seen the great Muppet caper so <laughs> <laughs> I rewatched Treasure Island earlier this year when we watched our flag means death it was like the only thing great. I could think of that was close to that energy yeah Treasure Island still so much fun it's similar to this but that one is much sillier, I think, because Treasure Island, it's more of an action adventure romp. It doesn't have the same yeah. emotional weight to it that A Christmas Carol has. So that's a movie that can that be sense. sillier in its retelling, but very funny, really great musical numbers in that one. It kind of leans more into being a big bombastic musical. That's good. Watch that. Uh, there is a, a Muppet Family Christmas special, I think is what it's called. I don't know where it's streaming, but like YouTube has recommended it to me this week. You can find it on YouTube. And it's the Muppets together with like the Fraggles. I think a couple okay. Sesame Street characters. Like you get so many different creations from the Jim Henson workshop in there. There's the album John Denver and the Muppets, A Christmas Together, which I grew up with. You can find that on Spotify. It's just uh, some really sweet original songs. Uh, I think some songs from Emmett Otter's Jug Band Christmas, which was another Henson Company production uh, mm -hmm. featuring Muppets, but not the Muppets. You know, I don't think Kurt. I don't think Kermit was in it. I I, I, don't, I haven't seen it in a very long time. But yeah, it's it's that. It's some classic Christmas carols just with the Muppets and yeah. uh, late great folk singer John Denver. Like they sing a round of Christmas is coming, the time to put a penny in the old man's hat. And it's like Piggy leading like Gonzo and Scooter and like a couple other characters in like a choral round of that song. And the track goes, she starts singing Christmas is coming, the goose is getting fat. And in the background Gonzo just goes, nice. <laughs> it's just, it's just nice. So funny. It's so funny. Because you don't know like if he's like, he's oh, Piggy, your one. voice this is the, good. The whole right? <laughs> but that's what it sounds like. Oh, good. A nice thick bird for me, Gonzo. <laughs> Gonzo, you a real one. <laughs> <laughs> Who's realer than Gonzo? <laughs> and yeah, check out check out any of those. Like you can't go wrong with anything in the Muppet family. Absolutely. Uh, I would also suggest that I think if you're here for more puppets, if you want more puppets for Christmas, I think two years ago we watched Gremlins, a Christmas classic. Yeah. Let me see here. Um, Gremlins. I'm Maybe? looking it up. That was episode 87 from 2019. 2019. OK. And yeah, it was 2020, I think, when we watched when we watched Scrooge, which has. 
I think really only the final ghost has some like puppetry elements to it, but that's another yeah. one with really interesting adaptations of the ghosts. Scrooge uh, was a movie. number 136 of the review show. Nice. Thank you. It's Scrooge is definitely more acerbic, but when it goes for tenderness, it really works on me. The moments in that movie that are sweet, I find really, really touching. <laughs> I, I think the ending of that movie, I don't. They, I get teary eyed at that final speech Bill Murray gives every time. Yeah. Um. Yeah. I would also recommend Scrooged. Uh. Maybe less family friendly, but not Definitely, necessarily. Yes. I. I. I, I don't know. I would necessarily say this is this is an adult film, right? But it like <laughs> <laughs> just not not a kids movie for that mm. one there uh and then earlier on i mentioned central park which is less of a like here's a holiday thing but just in the same conceit that the narrator is also a character in mm. there so he's not necessarily reliable but can be because he yeah. is in there right um so i i i thought that was an, an interesting twist to the story uh, or just like an, an extra layer to it that I think uh, is, is just something something new that I, that I don't think a lot of people would do on a retelling of uh, A Christmas Carol. Um, I also would like to recommend uh, Jingle Jangle, A Christmas Journey. This is uh, one yeah. that we covered also back in 2020 on number 137, uh, right after we watched Scrooge. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, this was a Netflix movie. Yeah. Yes. Netflix um, with a, I, I believe, an all black cast. Uh, mm -hmm. And that one was a real big surprise. It was really funny. It was heartfelt. They had some great music in the air. It was just kind of like, oh, this is the new Christmas movie that's out on Netflix. Uh, we'll see if it's any good or not. You never know. And it was actually pretty decent. I liked it a lot. Um, yeah, I, 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 I think it has the same kind of joy that this movie mm. ends up having by the end where it, it really does feel like a sense of community um, in, in the, the end yeah. of that one there. So that's true. I don't remember that movie real specifically anymore. Like I only remember I can only recall one of its many songs. <laughs> it's a long movie. It's like two and a half hours. It is a full length, heavy musical. But that movie had some of the best production design. It's in this yeah, kind of vaguely awesome. steampunk, very, you know, kind of Victorian, like fantasy world full of like wind up toys. I really love the look of that movie. That's a great, you know, really pay attention to a Muppet Christmas Carol and make Jingle Jangle the one you throw on while you're you're making a wreath. It's, it's good yeah. company. Absolutely. So, yeah, those would be our recommendations. Uh, for this time here but melissa it is time for me to do my pitches yes um, for the the final episode of the review show for the year um yes. and then like i said keep your eyes out for our end of the year anniversary retrospective here there'll be some awards and stuff that we we do our favorite episode of the review show our biggest surprise who would we like to take on a date, which mm -hmm. <laughs> characters, all that good stuff. Um, let's see here. So, oh, that is not a summary. That is just the entire plot. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. So pitch number one is the movie Spirited on Apple Plus. Mm -hmm. This is starring Will Ferrell and Ryan Reynolds. Uh, says it is an American Christmas themed musical comedy film um, is again a modern retelling of Charles Dickens, A Christmas Carol and its various adaptions since the ghost of Christmas present is nearing retirement, which would mean a return to Earth. Uh, he sets his sight on an unredeemable man who may end up helping the ghost come to terms with his own past um so 
this one seems like it is a very different spin Mm -hmm. on Christmas Carol. It's not necessarily finding Scrooge and redeeming Scrooge, but maybe the ghost also has some issues here and the ghost also needs some redemption. Uh, So that could be an interesting one. Uh, Of course, uh, Will Ferrell, Ryan Reynolds, uh, great comedic actors. Solid. Uh, So that one I think would be a lot of fun. And it's brand new. So, you know, why not do the brand new one there? Um, Pitch number two. This would actually be a trilogy of movies. Um, This is the Santa Claus. Santa Claus 1, 2, and 3. Starring... Tim Allen. Uh, this one is pretty. I, I, well, I, I was about to say self-explanatory. But that's, that's that's because for, for I feel like everyone age, has yeah. seen yeah. this, right? Uh, something happens to Santa. He gets knocked out. He's he's <laughs> out of the picture. He's he long dies. gone. He, he dies. He entirely dies. <laughs> he 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 he's he passes away. He's gone. He says peace. And then disappears. Uh, and then Tim Allen's character Peace on Earth, has to. to man. Yeah. And then Tim Allen's character has to step in and take up the mantle of Santa Claus uh, to ensure that Christmas can continue. Um, and selfishly, I am wanting to rewatch these movies because uh, they have a new Santa Claus series on Disney Plus. Uh, that I am interested Series. in checking out. Um, so would be interested in watching these, but it is three of these. So keep in, in, in a, 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 I, 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 I don't know. That's that. The last one, though. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Last pitch one. number three. I was scrolling through HBO Max just trying to find a movie we could uh, watch from HBO <laughs> uh. Max. I stumbled onto something that I haven't thought about until, since the year 2000. This is the movie entitled Snow Day from Nickelodeon uh, and uh, Paramount Pictures. Uh, this is an American comedy f- film, uh, and it is a, it, there's a big snow day that ha- happens. School is canceled. And there's one person that is 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 t- trying to ruin it all. And that's the guy that runs the plow. He's trying to plow the streets so everyone can go back to school and work. And all the k- kids have to band to get together to stop him from uh, ruining their snow day. So <laughs> snow day is pitch number three on HBO Max. <sighs> Snow go. Day Pitch is number... a truly inspired choice. I I have not even like thought of that movie since then. I used to love that movie. It's wild. Um, but uh, yeah, Pitch number one was Spirited on Apple TV Plus. Pitch number two was the Santa Claus Trilogy on Disney Plus, and uh, Pitch number three was Snow Day on HBO Max. Man. <laughs> I am going to have to go with Snow Day. I really like the idea of doing a movie that's just winter themed. It's not holiday specific. Yeah. Uh, I I have fond memories of Snow Day. I think I watched it maybe when I was in college and I still had a lot of fun with it. Absolutely. <laughs> this sounds Absolutely. like a riot. This sounds like a, a good note to end on. This is probably the most fun we would have out of any of these pitches. Let's end the year on a party. Let's watch Snow Day. Yeah, this is an, an interesting one because it I, like I feel like this was one of Nickelodeon's r- r- like it, we all know and love the like Disney Channel original movies yeah. that were coming out when we were a kid. Nickelodeon also had some movies, but not as many of them are like as mm. fondly remembered. Like we have Good Burger like that. Mm. So, like that I think the is spy. like the main. Yeah. Harriet the Spy, but like those are that's kind of it. Snow Day is one of them. I feel like this is one of their like, hey, let's make a Nickelodeon movie to compete with the Disney Channel original movies. And I remember I used to love this movie uh, back in the day, but it just like just completely left my mind and my memory (laughs) 
until I saw it again. I was just like, oh my god, I love this movie. So there you go. This will be nice. Knows if this will hold up at all. I'm sure it's gonna be awful, but I'm excited. <laughs> Snow uh, day. And this is on HBO Max? Correct. I found it on okay. HBO Max. Um, it might also be uh streaming. Oh, let's see. Um oh, I'm seeing this on the Wikipedia. A musical remake is set to <gasps> premiere December 16th, 2022 on Paramount Plus. Oh my god. I had no idea. So it, this might also be on Paramount Plus. Plus, if you have that, I okay. happen to find it yeah, on HBO Max. I was thinking that Nickelodeon's in the Paramount family, but yeah. yeah. All right. This one's this one. The first one was on HBO Max. OK. Wow. Amazing. <laughs> I'm so excited. <laughs> yeah. Good stuff. Uh, well, that is what we will do next week. We will have a snow day. Um so be excited for all of that. But that wraps up this episode of the review show. Melissa, where can the people find you on the Internet? You can find me on Twitter and Instagram at WilkyWit. That's W-I-L-K-Y-W-I-T. And you can listen to my other podcast, Saturday Morning Obscurities, the show where me and my brother Jams talk about weird old kid shows you feel like only you remember. Uh, so if you also had, had your brain light up at the thought of snow day, go to our podcast and we've got similar like old Nickelodeon memories. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, if you guys would like to follow me, I am at Yo Kyle Springer on Twitter, co-host and <laughs> Hive. Uh, and if you'd like to stay up to date with all of the stuff that we do here at The Whatnots, we are at The Whatnots on all of those same social media platforms. Uh, so yeah, go like, share, and subscribe. That would help us out a ton. If you are watching the YouTube version of this, man, my computer is real slow today, but we got more v v videos over th there on that side. Uh, go check it out. This has been number 234 of the Whatnots Review Show. We will see you all next time. Bye. Bye.